hours of Viennese waltz here. The first one is called More Than Just the Basics. The second class is called Intermediate Viennese Waltz. So we started out with what, just what the basics are. Facing diagonal center for the leader, we did a natural turn for four measures. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. The end facing diag center, and we did a right foot forward chain step. One, two, three. Now we're facing diagonal wall, and we do a reverse turn for four measures. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And from facing diagonal wall, left foot forward into a chain step. That ends facing diag center. And from here we start again with the natural turn. So the ladies part of all of that, she starts backing diagonal center. And doing the natural turn, she would start with her left foot. So that is one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four. And then she does a left foot change step. Now the reverse turn. This is the one that has the cross, and it's on her forward half that she's crossing. Then we have the right foot change step, and we're ready to start again with a natural turn. Now notice the Viennese waltz has phrasing to it, ideally eight measures to the phrase. However, this choreography doesn't adhere to that because phrasing at the moment is not as important as just comfort, being able to get in and out of things fluently. So work it into phrasing eventually. In my opinion, ideal phrasing would be seven bars of a turn and then a change step, and then seven bars of the other turn and a change step. But that would require learning how to do the other change step for the man being able to dance a backward change step and for the woman a forward one. The second thing that we talked about having established that choreography are all of the things that get in the way of a good Viennese waltz. For instance, popping up. So in this dance, assume something like tango level and then just maintain that throughout the dance. So tango actually has more rise and fall than the Viennese waltz does. Maintain a low level throughout. That way you can drive and it's much more efficient. We also talked about who's on the inside or outside of a turn. If you're going forward, make a beeline for where you're going, down the boards. If you're going backward, be a gentleman, open a door for your partner. The person going forward has the bigger steps, the person going backward has the smaller ones. And we used the analogy a while ago of the leader holding a dinner tray in front of him and kind of setting it aside. That's the feeling we have as we go forward into a turn. That we set our partner aside so we can drive through the space where they were. And going backward, you're the one who is being set aside. At first, overdo that. As you become better and better, it becomes more and more subtle. You don't have to be set aside so far as you become better at it. Make sure your head position is consistent <coughs> in this dance. So leaders, make sure you can always see your left hand. You're not actually looking at it, but you can see it. Make sure your head doesn't get lost in ladies, this ladies land over there. Likewise, for the woman looking just over her wristwatch is about right most of the time. If she has a wandering head position, it will be devastating to your Viennese waltz. Other things that can be devastating to the dance, sometimes cuffed pants on the man, so heels go into cuffs, and that's a problem. Uh, sandals for the woman, sometimes her heel goes inside a sandal strap. That means you're both going down. So try to watch out for what you're wearing when you're dancing a lot of Viennese waltz. Um, if this is the dance you're going to practice for a half hour, so it's worth it actually getting off pumps to do it if you have them. We talked about how to turn corners. If you're turning to the right, then when you get to a corner, turn a little less and it takes you right on around. So that's the easiest way. Turning to the left around the corner is flashier because it requires an overturn. And the overturn needed to be done with a little extra inclination. So if you look with your head in the direction you want to go and pitch your head that way, it helps you get around the corner more. And we will use that also when we're doing a reverse turn out to the center of the room to go into flex rolls. Also, going backward is more compact when you're turning a corner on a reverse. Some people even do a heel pivot where they don't actually take out their, take all the steps, just fake the step. But for right now, stepping it out is a good idea. Just keep it very compact, particularly if you're at a corner. The principle of sway was important in the Viennese waltz in the natural turn. We talked about good sway being more like a pendulum swing of the body bad swing being more like a metronome action. So there is eventually a place for metronome type action of the body, but not here and not now. 
So when you're dancing a natural turn, think of taking the hips out from under the body. That's how we produce our sway. It makes it a lot more efficient to move and more beautiful and more fun. Then we went in the next class into flecorals. For a flecoral, we have the leader starting facing diagonal wall to do a reverse turn and dancing four measures of a reverse turn to get out into the center of the room. If you can get there in two measures, that's fine. And then from there, the flecoral is, for the person going forward, basically just a spot volta, just swivel on the spot, crossing in front twice. For the person who's doing the backward F, it's a wide step to the side, a cross in back, other step to the side. And the trick will be to keep the two choices uh, uh, clear, straight, while you're going around one, two, three, four, five, six. For our purposes, we did four bars of reverse into the center, four bars of reverse flexible. Then the leader does a contra check, one, two, three. It ends with a little side step. And then we did the natural flexible for four bars. And it is the same formula, a slot volta or one measure side, cross back, side, and we repeat those two measures, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a natural turn to take us out to diagonal wall to resume our normal progression. So the woman's part of that amalgamation is reverse turn for four measures, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. From this cross position, we then dance the flecoral starting with her backward part first, side, cross, side, and then the slot volta part. Repeat those two bars, one, two, three, one, two, three. For the contra check, she's pretty much already there. So she just moves the back foot back a little bit and looks more to the left, then recover and step forward. So that's three beats, one, two, three, and now we do the natural flecoral Side, across, side, forward, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, and a natural turn to come out of that one. The lead for the flecoral, remember, is we've danced a reverse turn into the center, so location will be part of the lead. Once we get to the center, then we overturn the reverse, and that's pretty much the definition of a flecoral. It's just a reverse turn that's been overturned. The transition from left to right is fairly simple once you've done it a lot, but you will have to practice it a lot because remember our principle, transitions are trickier and more important than the figures themselves. Really pay a lot of attention in all dances to transitions. And then one more principle we talked about a lot today was centrifugal force. Really, really important to maintain your side of the position. The woman particularly is always taking her head weight toward her left elbow. So she's not taking her head weight back and certainly not in toward her partner toward her left elbow. He has the same feeling, but he's in a much more upright position as he's moving toward his left elbow. So there's only one flower per couple, and that's going to be her. She needs to make sure she always keeps her head feeling as if it's on the outside of the circle when turning. If it ever comes in, then we end up not being able to feel where each other is, and the thing usually just collapses from there. To keep from getting dizzy in the Viennese waltz, focus on the horizon. Do not focus close on your partner, your own hand, just focus distantly and you will not get dizzy as quickly. A little bit of practice will go a long way also for that. Thank you all very much. Good job.